Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Draw with Rob. With me, Rob. Bit of. Here I am, on the back of the latest Draw with Rob. Activity book. Now I'm a children's author and illustrator. Maybe you've seen some of my books before. I wrote this one here and I illustrated it too. It's called Blown Away. It's all about Penguin Blue, who goes out flying his kite on a windy day. Look, and he ends up getting blown away with all his friends. And they end up somewhere. The penguins aren't usually found. They end up in the jungle. It's a really fun one that maybe you've seen this one. Odd dog out. It's about a sausage dog who doesn't fit in with all the other sausage dogs. So she goes away to find herself and she learns a really important lesson about herself on that day. So check that one out. But we are here today, as per usual, to do a little drawing together. But it's not a totally usual episode of Draw With Rob. It's a slightly special episode today because I am delighted to be supporting Empathy Day. And it's very important, I think, Empathy Day. Empathy is very important. Does, do any of you guys know what empathy means? Well, empathy is basically, it's our ability to understand another person by putting putting us in their shoes. So if you have empathy with someone, you, you look at things from their point of view, you sort of put yourself in their shoes and think about how they would feel about certain things. And it's a very, very important life skill empathy. Because what it does, I think it really promotes kindness. Because if you imagine how some, if you're thinking of saying something, but just before you say it, you imagine how those words will affect somebody else by putting yourself in their shoes, it really does, I think, make, make us want to help people and make them feel better. And do you know what's really useful for empathy? Books. Because when you read a book, if you think about it, when you read a book, you put yourself into the shoes of those characters and you look at the world through those characters' eyes, don't you? And so a book is a really important tool in helping us to learn to be empathetic. So I think the book world and uh, empathy day is a really strong link there so I'm delighted to be supporting it so I was thinking to myself right what can I do we did one we d I did a video last year we did a sloth a really nice drawing of a sloth for empathy day last year so I was thinking what can I draw this year now I have got so I showed you earlier didn't I, I showed you this book this draw with Rob activity book now that is the third book in the draw with Rob series the first one was the draw with Rob the original draw with Rob activity book the second one we did a nice Christmas draw with rock activity book but you know what i've got another one coming out a little bit later on this year in july and it's going to be called draw with rob monster madness now i haven't quite finished it yet so i can't show you it yet but i do know that one of the characters in it is going to be somebody called the kindness monster and seeing as empathy is all about being kind to other people i thought i would show you today how to draw the kindness monster especially for empathy day does that sound like a good plan please say yes <laughs> right grab yourself a piece of paper grab yourself a pen or a pencil something to draw with you might need something to color with a bit later on but this is how draw with rob works okay i'm gonna break this drawing down into little tiny bite-sized pieces so i might draw a circle here or a square here a triangle here but i'm gonna do little tiny bits at a time that everybody will be able to draw and um and because that's a lot of people say they don't think they can draw but if you do break a picture down into little tiny component pieces it becomes much easier so what you can, what you're going to do you're going to watch me draw a bit pause this video copy what i do the little drawing that i do start me up again i'll draw a bit more pause me copy what I do start me up I draw you draw I draw you draw I draw you draw I draw you draw and at the end we should end up with a lovely picture of a kindness monster right shall we start let's do this right so we are gonna start and where should we start this drawing it's always for me it's like tricky isn't it I need to I before I show you I need to work out the order that I need to do the drawing in and sometimes I practice beforehand, sometimes we just go for it. And today is one of those days, I'm just gonna go for it. Let's do it, let's see how it works, shall we? So I think I'm gonna start down the bottom of my page today. So what I want you to do is a horizontal line, about a centimeter and a half long. That's a pretty easy start, isn't it? Nice and easy. From the left-hand side of that line, I want you to go up a centimeter or so, vertically, like that. Then we are gonna go across a little bit longer this time. What's that, five or six centimeters? Then we're gonna come down 
And then we're going to go along about the same length as that, so a centimetre and a half. So we're making a sort of funny zigzaggy shape. Okay, a nice easy start then. What we're going to do now is basically we're going to join this point and this point up, but we're not going to just go like that or like that. We're going to go right up and over like that, probably up to about there. But again, we're not doing it in a smooth line. We're going to do it in a bit of a zigzaggy line. So what I want you to do, we're going to come up and then every centimetre or so, we're just going to do a little zigzag. And we're going to start, we're going to start by going sort of straight up. And when we get to here, we're going to start just going over the top. And as we go over, we're going to sort of make our spiky bits head upwards. And then they're going to change direction as we go round, like that. And then we're going to start coming back down again. So this is probably the trickiest bit of the drawing. But don't worry, it doesn't have to be perfect. And then eventually we join back up again. So we basically we've just gone up and over, but we've done it in a slightly zigzaggy pattern. And I can you can just go back in afterwards if you want. Just tweak a few of the little spiky bits here and there if you want to make them a bit thicker or a little bit pointier. But you should end up with something that looks roughly the same as mine. And that is the start of our little kindness monster drawing. Now then, what should we do next? Let's do a nice smiley mouth. Now our monster is very smiley, he's a very kind monster as his name or her name implies. So we need to do a nice big smiley mouth and I want you to do that about halfway up this shape, I want you to put your pen right next to the edge, but not quite on the edge. And we're just going to draw a lovely big smiley mouth all the way across this shape, like that. So we're right to the edge, but not quite touching. Okay, a nice big smiley mouth. Now the kindness monster only has two teeth, and they are right at the end of each side of the mouth. So we're just going to do a little tooth coming up like that and exactly the same at the other end. So a little sort of rounded rectangle. Cute! Starting to take shape nicely. Right, eyes next. Now the eyes are very important when we're drawing the kindness monster because he or she, it's up to you, has lovely, lovely big friendly eyes. So just above that tooth there, I want you to draw a nice big circle about this sort of size. And let's draw one over the other side too. Quite widely spaced. They don't have to be perfectly straight, perfectly round. Again, and we want our drawing to have lots of lovely character, don't we? So my eyes are a bit wonky, but then the smile's a bit wonky too. It all adds to it, I think. Then, in the middle, let's draw a circle. Now, I don't want you to colour this in yet. Usually when we do eyes, we colour that in black, don't we? But I don't want you to do that yet because I'm going to show you a little trick here. Now, our kindness monster has got very friendly eyes, very lovely, sparkly, friendly eyes. So I want to draw some nice highlights in the black, the black areas, the, the pupils. So what we're going to do before we colour it in, I want you to draw another circle in each eye towards the top right, like that. Then I want you to do a smaller one just underneath it on both sides. And then I want you to do a tiny one in this space here, like that. So you've drawn three little circles within each pupil. Then you can colour in around them. We're going to leave those three circles white. And you'll see what happens. It's a technique that's used in manga a lot. And what it means, it makes your eyes, makes the eyes that you're drawing look sort of sparkly. Which I always think is quite a nice attractive quality. Look, lovely, friendly, sparkly eyes. Okay, now. Again, our kindness monster is a very, very friendly little monster. Most monsters, you think when people think of monsters, they sort of think of the bad, the negative side of monsters. They're always sort of scary or sort of na naughty or nasty. But I don't think all monsters are na naughty and nasty. Some of them can certainly 
be very friendly. And this one is very, very kind indeed. Lovely monster, this one. So let's give, um, this is gonna be a boy, this monster for me, but yours could be whatever you want. But I'm gonna give him two lovely eyebrows. Now, do you remember my trick? If you want to make somebody look happy, you put the eyebrows quite a long way above the eyes. It makes them look very sort of open-faced and happy. So I'm gonna add my eyebrows right at the top here, but they're not just gonna be straight lines because as you can see, all these zigzags make makes our monster look very sort of furry. So we're gonna do some furry eyebrows. So what we do, we start with a little diagonal line like that. Then we're gonna curve around and we're gonna add some more little zigzaggy shapes like that. Let's do one more actually, up like that and then join it back up. So it's a nice furry eyebrow. Let's do exactly the same on the other side. So we do a smooth line at the bottom and then zigzagginess on the top like that. There we go. Two lovely eyebrows for our kindness monster. Let's give him some arms, shall we? Now the arms, we're gonna start around about here. So a centimeter or so below the mouth. I want you to draw a little sort of diagonal line coming down like that. Then we're gonna turn at right angles, like that. And then we're gonna add a, a zigzaggy line, just going up this side like that. And that's gonna be one of our kindness monster's arms. They're sort of gonna be, you know, down towards her tummy or his tummy. I can't remember whether it's a he or she this one. Let's do the same on this side. We're gonna come down, round, and then a bit zigzaggy up here, like that. Here we go, two little, arms just like that the next thing let's give them some fingers and thumbs I'm gonna add a little semicircle there and then one two three four oops smudge that a little bit same here thumb first then one two three four I'm just gonna color those in we're gonna have little black fingers, I think, for this kindness monster. Here we go. Cute, really cute, really cute. And we haven't even done the cutest bit yet. Um, let's add some little toes, shall we? Again, we're gonna do those little semicircles. So I'm gonna do four little toes, I think. One, two, three, four there. One, two, three, four. I don't know why I've done four, not five, just have. So there we go. Okay, this is the good bit now because the main feature of our kindness monster, because one of the main um, traits of somebody who's kind and somebody who has a lot of empathy is that they are very, very good listeners. I think that's very important. When you're talking to somebody, you always have to listen to what they're saying. If you just talk, 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 talk about yourself, that's not very kind, is it? You're not letting somebody else put their opinion into the conversation. So you have to be a very good listener if you want to be kind and um, have lots of empathy. So the kindness monster has got very big ears because he or she is a very, very good listener. This is how we're gonna draw the ears. We are basically gonna draw a huge circle, the side of the head like that. But remember the furriness. So what we need to do, we're gonna start around here. We're gonna come round, we're gonna start our circle off but by the time we get to sort of 12 o'clock, so the top of our circle, I want you to start doing that little zigzaggy pattern as we come around. So a nice sort of furry zigzaggy circular ear. If you like, if you need to draw a little circle beforehand, you could draw it in pencil very lightly, just a smooth circle, and that could act as your guide when you're doing the zigzag bit. Because it is quite tricky to do a zigzaggy circle. That's not bad, actually. I'm quite pleased with that. I was a bit nervous about it. And then, and then, of course, we've got to do the same on the other side. We've got to try and make them pretty much symmetrical. So I'm going to come around there. I'm All the time I'm drawing, I'm looking at this side just to see what I did and see if I can do it roughly the same. So here we go. We're coming down, zigzagging around. So far, so good. Don't muck it up now, Rob. It's impossible to muck up drawing you know what I say if you if you go a bit wrong just keep on drawing you can always correct it with your drawing don't need to throw anything away there we go so two lovely big ears on our kindness monster so he or she is ready to listen and have a nice chat with someone put put themselves 
into somebody else's shoes. There we go. Now let's just give our ears a nice little bit of lining. You know I like to do this. This is going to be smooth, this bit, so it's nice and easy in comparison. Slightly thinner line. Big old circle like that. And the same on this side. We just come around, we leave a bit of a gap. Like between the edge of our circle and the furry bit. And there we go. Look at that. I love the kindest monster. Such a cute little character, even if I do say so myself. So yeah, you guys are getting a sneak peek at something that's going to be in the, in the next draw with Rock Book. Nobody has ever seen this before. Aren't you lucky? <laughs> so there we go, the kindness monster. Now then, we don't know what monsters look like really, do we? Monsters are, really, this monster's just come out of my imagination and your monster can come out of your imagination. So I want you to apply full imagination to your drawing when it comes to colouring in. You can do it any colour you like, and you can add patterns to your kindness monster. Lots of hearts, that might be nice. My kindness monster is going to have a nice heart shape on his tummy, you see. I thought that would be nice, but hearts are a very appropriate motif, aren't they, for kindness. But you can do anything you like, you can do stars. Or, I always say this, don't I, you can do a rainbow stripe, I love rainbow colours. Or you can just do it all red or blue or whatever you like, or little bits and pieces here and there, a nice patchwork colour might be nice. Just go crazy. Just enjoy yourself have fun i'm going to go into super speed mode while i color my kindness monster in so i'll see you back here in about 30 seconds okay are you ready three two one let's go my finished kindness monster. What do you think? Oh, I'm very pleased with this little character. I really like him. So as you can see, I've gone for like an orange color scheme. I told you, didn't I? I was gonna add a little sort of heart pattern in the fur on his tummy, um, because obviously kindness, hearts, sort of go together. Um, and you can see, I really like coloring in monsters because you can sort of do it quite roughly with lots of lines to make them look really sort of furry. And um, you don't have to worry about being too neat. Um, and I really, it's just really fun to kind of color. So yes, I've, I've used lots of different yellows and oranges to kind of um, shade my drawing in. And you can see, I've, I've imagined the lights coming over from this side a bit, so I've done it slightly darker on the on the right hand side. It just makes your drawing look a little, look a little bit more rounded. And I've had my favorite thing to do, the little scribbles uh, by the feet to make it look like they're standing on the floor. And um, I added a little bit of color in the iris behind the eye as well, a little bit of yellow there. So that is my kindness monster, all ready to be a good listener and be very empathetic. Um, so yes, I'm very, very pleased with that. Don't forget everybody, you need to sign your drawings. Don't you, I'm gonna just sign mine down here. There we go, Rob. Oh, how nice. So, I can't wait to see your drawings. Whenever we do a drawing like this, I get super excited because I just know you're gonna come up with the goods in terms of the colors and the patterns that you use to color your monster in. So, please get your grown up to take a picture of your drawing. Post it on social media using this hashtag here, draw with Rob. That's the best way that I will get to see it. And as I said, I really can't wait to see your drawings this week. And don't forget guys, Empathy Day. What can you do on Empathy Day? Well, I would say the first thing you can do is read. You can read, you can find a book and do a nice bit of reading. Find yourself an empathy boosting book, a book where you can really put yourself into that character's shoes. Do some reading. Um, uh, you can practice listening. Maybe talk to a friend and have a really good go. Really concentrate on listening hard to what they say. And then you can use your empathy skills to make a difference, can't you? You should go to the official Empathy Day website. Here it is, go there, check it out. They've got lots of activities and lots of things for you guys to do. Um, I hope you've had I hope you've had a really nice time with me today. I know that I have, and a bonus, you've got a little sneak peek at one of the characters from the brand new Draw with Rob book. Would you I tell you what, I, while while we're sharing secrets, would you like to would you like me to show you the cover of the book? Yeah? Alright, 
I'm going to try and show you the cover if I can. Here you go. <gasps> There's the cover of the book. It's called Monster Madness. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Trust me, you're going to really like this one. There you go. It's gone now. A little sneak peek. A little sneak <laughs> peek for you. Right. I'm going to go now. I've had a lot of fun showing you how to draw the kindness monster. Remember, Empathy Day. Think about how you can be kind to your friends. I'm going to be back very soon with another episode of Draw with Rob. In the meantime, everybody, take care, be kind to each other, and I'll see you very soon. Bye-bye. I'm back and I'm here to tell you about something super exciting. I know lots of you have enjoyed my Draw With Rob activity books. Well, guess what? We've got a brand new one and it's out now and it's called Draw With Rob, Build A Story. And as the title suggests, this one is all about telling you how to build your own stories, how to write them, how to illustrate them. We're gonna think about characters, how to choose your good guys and your bad guys. We're gonna think about where you set your stories, very important, when you set your story. Is it gonna be in the past, set in the past, or in the future, present day? Um, we're gonna talk about how to structure your story. We, we need to give it a good beginning, middle, and end. What about plot twists? Do unexpected things happen in your story? It's all covered in this book here. And we've also got our regular draw-alongs. Loads of draw-alongs in this one. Lots of puzzles, lots of colouring. It's super fun. Every single page is perforated. So once you've done your little draw-along like this one of a unicorn, you draw it in the frame here and you tear that page out. You stick it up on the wall. That's super cool, isn't it? And guess what? Right at the end, we've even got lots of blank pages like that for you to write your own story and illustrate your own story. And then you can put the whole thing together. Look, you put your own story together like that and then you've made your own book. You don't need me anymore. So listen, I'm super proud of this book. I'm pretty sure you're gonna really, really enjoy it. And guess what? It's out now. You can get it from wherever you buy your books. Okay, so listen, I hope you enjoy it and I'm gonna see you really soon for another episode of Draw With Rob. Bye everyone.